ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد all thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom we thank seek for help and invoke for forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil within ourselves he whom Allah guides will never be misled and he whom Allah allows to be led astray will never find one to guide him and we bear witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Qur'an with several beautiful, eloquent, and comprehensive adjectives. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Qur'an as huda, a guide. The Qur'an is a guide that guides us towards success in this life, but more importantly towards success in the life of the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Qur'an as rahmah, a mercy. It's one of the expressions, it's one of the manifestations of Allah's infinite mercy upon humanity, upon mankind. It is described as nur. It's a light that illuminates the heart, it illuminates the mind. It is described as bushra, glad tidings. Anyone who believes the Qur'an and follows it, they are being given glad tidings of forgiveness, pardon, grace, and mercy. It's described as shifa, as a cure. That the Qur'an is a cure for both spiritual as well as physical ailments. So these very beautiful, powerful, eloquent and divine words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are a source of guidance, mercy, illumination, cure and glad tidings that are meant to penetrate our hearts. That we are supposed to feel the beauty, the eloquence, the power of the Qur'an. It's supposed to do something inside of us. That when we hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it penetrates the depth of our hearts. But the only way for us to benefit from the Qur'an is if we have a real, strong, and intimate relationship with it. That we are supposed to love the Qur'an more than we love any other speech. The foundation of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's built upon love. That we are supposed to love Allah more than anyone and anything else in this world. And just as we love Allah more than anyone and anything else in this world, we love His speech more than any other speech. And the way we express love for the Qur'an, true love for the Qur'an is expressed by reciting it, by understanding its message, and more importantly, implementing its guidance into our daily lives. Love is a very interesting, unique emotion. It's a very unique power, it's a very unique force. And it is connected to the heart. And the Qur'an was sent down upon the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us, He is addressing our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ الشَّهِيدٌ Indeed in this, indeed in the Qur'an, لَذِكْرَ There's a powerful reminder. لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٍ For whoever has a heart, for whoever's heart is alive. أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ الشَّهِيدٌ And they listen attentively. Throughout the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes what types of emotions we're supposed to experience and feel when we're engaging with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadith, kitaban mutashabihan mathaniya, taqsha'ir minhu juludu al-ladheena yakhshawna rabbahum, thumma talinu juluduhum wa qulubuhum ila dhikrillah. Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the most beautiful message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the absolutely most beautiful discourse. Kitaban mutashabihan. A book of perfect consistency. Mathaniya, with repeated lessons. تَقْشَعِرُّ مِنْهُ جُلُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ Which causes the skin of those who fear their Lord to tremble. 
Then their skins and their hearts, they find comfort with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's describing the impact the Qur'an is supposed to have upon us. First and foremost, He starts by reminding us that this is the absolute most perfect and beautiful message. Allahu nazzala ahsan al-hadith. The most perfect, the most beautiful discourse, the most perfect, the most beautiful message is the Qur'an. Kitaban mutashabihan. That it's of perfect consistency. The Qur'an from the beginning to the end is absolutely perfect and consistent. There are no contradictions whatsoever in the speech of Allah. Mathaniya with repeated lessons. That oftentimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats very important concepts, very important ideas so that we internalize that message and we act upon it. Then he describes how we're supposed to feel. Which causes the skin of those who fear their Lord to crawl. That when we come across certain passages of the Qur'an, we are supposed to feel a sense of fear. We are supposed to feel a sense of awe and reverence and respect and humility. That it causes us to get goosebumps. That it sends a shiver down our spines. So for example, when we come across certain descriptions of the Day of Judgment that are painting a picture of absolute chaos, difficulties, problems, and hardships, when we come across these very vivid descriptions of hellfire, we are supposed to feel afraid. That message is supposed to penetrate our hearts and cause us to feel goosebumps. It sends again the shiver down our spine. ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ But then at other times, we are going to feel a sense of comfort, a sense of peace and contentment, and our hearts will feel that contentment with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there are other passages, there are other verses, that when we recite them, it fills our hearts with hope. Hope in Allah's mercy, His forgiveness, His grace, and His pardon. Or we come across these very beautiful descriptions of paradise that we feel this contentment within our hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically is telling us that the Qur'an is supposed to pull on our emotional strings. So the question we should be asking ourselves is when is the last time I experienced the beauty, the power, the eloquence of the Qur'an? When is the last time I felt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words penetrate my heart? that actually moved me to fear or moved me to this feeling of hope. And we see this type of relationship manifest in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. That when he would recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would engage with them. He would interact with them. They would actually penetrate his heart. There's a narration from Hudayfa radiallahu an where he mentions, one day I came to the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ at night. And I found the Prophet ﷺ praying to Hajj, so I joined him. And the Prophet ﷺ, he began his prayer, and he started reciting Surah Al-Baqarah. And he recited the entire Surah until he came to the end. And once he reached the end, I thought he would say Allahu Akbar and go into Ruku', but then he carried on. He continued, and he recited Surah Ali Imran. And when he reached the end of Ali Imran, I thought he was going to say Allahu Akbar and go into Ruku'. But he continued, and he recited Surah An-Nisa, and he recited the entire Surah. That is a very large portion of the Qur'an. That's more than five ajza. You know, we just finished Ramadan a little bit more than a month ago, and when we're standing in Taraweeh, the Imam is reciting a page, two pages, and we start feeling a little bit uncomfortable, we start moving around. The Prophet ﷺ is reciting Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, and An-Nisa in one raka'ah. And then Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, he describes the recitation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he was reciting in a measured tone, a measured pace, slowly, melodiously. And any time he came across a verse that was glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would pause and glorify Allah. When he came across a verse that's describing rahmah, he would pause and ask for rahmah. When he came across a verse that was describing punishment, he would pause and he would seek refuge with Allah from his punishment. 
So this is a very good example of how the Prophet ﷺ would engage with the Qur'an. They call it At-Tajawub, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying something and the Prophet ﷺ would respond, which highlights that his recitation was not passive. It was an active, it was active, he was engaged. He was focusing on the meanings of what he was saying, that the meanings were penetrating his heart and he was interacting and he was responding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech. In another narration, we're told that once he came to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, and he said, Iqra' alayya al-Qur'an. Recite the Qur'an to me. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he was very humbled, he was honored, but he was also a little bit embarrassed. That, Iqra'u alayk, should I recite to you? Wa alayka unzil, while the Qur'an was revealed to you? That, Ya Rasulullah, you are the messenger of Allah. You received the Qur'an. How can I recite in front of you? How can I recite the Qur'an to you? The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنِّي أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَسْمَعَهُ مِنْ غَيْرِ That I enjoy listening to it from others as well. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an started reciting Surah An-Nisa. And he continued to recite until he reached a verse that describes the status, the station of the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا that how will it be on the day of judgment when we bring a witness over every community and then we bring you, O Prophet wasallam, as a witness over all of them. When he reached that verse, he said, Hasbukan an. That's enough for now. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh said, then I looked up and the Prophet's eyes were flowing with tears, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to tears. They caused him to cry. And that is the type of relationship we are supposed to aspire towards as well. That when we hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they pull on our heart. They cause us to feel these emotions. And we actually shed these tears. And we see that type of relationship in the lives of the companions as well. That for them, the Qur'an was truly the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they heard Allah's speech, they would not hesitate whatsoever to put it into practice. They had adopted the attitude of سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We have heard and we have obeyed. They wouldn't theorize, they wouldn't discuss, they wouldn't enter into these debates and arguments. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something, they would act upon it immediately. That is why when the verses that finally prohibited the consumption of intoxicating beverages were revealed, the companions immediately accepted it. There was no second questioning, there was no second guessing, there was not no argument, debate. They immediately got rid of anything they had. And we saw this because for them the Qur'an is a lived reality. There's a beautiful story regarding Umar radiallahu anh, during his khilafah, <clears throat> when he was the khalifa. It's mentioned that a man by the name of Uyayna came to visit his nephew whose name was Al-Hur. And Al-Hur, he was a young man, he was intelligent, he was a scholar. And he was part of the council that Umar radiallahu an used to consult. So Umar radiallahu an, he had a council of scholars, he would consult with them regarding important matters, important affairs. So Uayna, he says to Al-Hur that you have access to the Khalifa. You have access to Umar radiallahu an. And I would like an audience with him. I would like to come and speak with him. So Al-Hur innocently said, okay, no problem. I can get you an audience with him. And he did so. So Uyayna comes in front of Umar radiallahu an, and he starts attacking him. He starts accusing him. He starts going off at him. He says that you are not treating us fairly, that you're not ruling with us fairly, you're not giving us enough wealth. And for those of you who are familiar with Umar radiallahu an, you don't speak to him like that. So Umar radiallahu an visibly became angry and he was about to respond. And when Al-Hur saw that, he immediately said, Ya Amir Al-Mu'mineen, the O leader of the faithful, remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. خُذِ الْعَفْوَةِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَيَعْرِدْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ That adopt the attitude of pardon. Adopt the attitude of forgiveness. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ And enjoin what's good. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And ignore the ignorant. وَإِنَّ هَذَا لَمِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And this uncle of mine, he's one of the ignorant. As soon as he recited these verses from the Qur'an, Umar radiallahu anh calmed down. 
His anger subsided. And that was the nature of the relationship the companions had with the Qur'an. That when they heard the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would penetrate their hearts directly and it would lead into direct action. You know, all of us have experienced anger in our lives. All of us have had moments when someone said something that made us upset. Or someone said something that made us upset. So imagine yourself in that situation. Someone is cursing you, someone's abusing you. And you're getting angry, you're getting upset. And you have the ability to act out on it. And then someone advises you with the Qur'an. How would we react? Would we become calm? Would our anger subside? Or would our nafs come into play? So again, this is the type of relationship that all of us are supposed to aspire towards. That when we hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we immediately accept it. We reflect upon its meanings, we try our best to live by it and according to it. And then the narrator describes Umar radiallahu anhu saying, كَانَ وَقَافًا عِنْدَ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ That he was someone who strictly adhered to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that was mentioned in the Qur'an, he was ready and willing to accept and implement. There's another famous story regarding Abu Talha radiallahu anhu. Abu Talha radiallahu anhu, he was one of the most wealthy companions in Medina. And he owned several properties across the city. Several gardens and several date palms. And one of them was named Bayruha. And this was located very close to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would actually visit this garden and he would spend time there sitting and benefiting from the shade and drinking the water from the well there. And then the verse from Ali Imran was revealed. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ That you will never attain true righteousness until you spend from that which you love. And whatever you spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. So when Abu Talha radiallahu an heard these verses, he immediately came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is saying, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ That you will never attain righteousness until you spend from that which you love. And this Bayruha, this property of mine, is my most beloved property. So I am here to give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, imagine Abu Talha radiallahu anhu, someone who's very wealthy, who owns all of these properties, and his most favorite property, as soon as he heard this verse, he was ready and willing to give it up. Because for him, he realized, he recognized, he acknowledged that these are the actual words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not just some idea, it's not just some theory, it's not some concept. This is the speech of his Lord and Creator. He had full, absolute certainty in it. So as soon as he heard it, he gave up his most beloved property. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was extremely happy with this. He expressed his happiness, he expressed his pleasure. And he said, That is a profitable transaction. But then he advised him that instead of giving it away in charity, give it to some of your relatives. And by doing so, you'll get double benefit. That you're maintaining a good relationship with your relatives, and you're also giving something away in charity. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning these examples is just to illustrate, to demonstrate the type of connection, the type of relationship we're supposed to have with the Qur'an, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the Qur'an is the absolute most important book in our lives. And that's because it's not simply a book. These words that we're reciting, these words that we're listening to, these are the actual divine words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord and creator of the heavens and the earth and every single thing they contain. And these words were sent down upon the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as guidance for all of mankind until the end of times. And those who benefit most from the guidance are us as believers. Hudan lil muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Qur'an as being a guide for the people of taqwa. For those who are mindful, conscious, and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are supposed to treat the Qur'an as our own personal book of guidance. That if I try my best to follow this roadmap that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to me, it will lead me towards success in this life, 
but more importantly towards success in the life of the hereafter. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts with love for the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who recite the Qur'an, understand its message, and implement its guidance into our daily lives. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ فَإِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings upon his last and final messenger, his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times. There's absolutely nothing better than spending time in the company of the Qur'an. The more time we spend with the Qur'an, the more our love for it will increase. And the more benefit we will achieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, qad ja'atkum maw'idhatun min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudun, wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'minin. Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, qad ja'atkum maw'idhatun min rabbikum. A powerful reminder has come to you from your Lord. That the Qur'an is a very powerful reminder. That is one of the objectives, that is one of the purposes of the Qur'an. That any time we recite the Qur'an, listen to the Qur'an, we are reminded about Allah. We are reminded about our purpose in life. We are reminded that the life of this world is temporary, it's fleeting, it's going to come to an end. We're reminded that there's a life of the hereafter. وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ It's a cure for what's in people's chests. It's a cure for our hearts. It's a cure for these spiritual ailments and diseases. وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ It's a guide and mercy for the believers. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَانِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallam, قُلْ Tell your community, tell your companions. بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَانِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ Let them rejoice. With the mercy and grace of Allah. Some of the mufassirun, some of the commentators, they mention that the fadl here is referring to the Qur'an. And the rahmah is Islam. That these are two of the most valuable gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. The believers should be happy. They should rejoice. They should celebrate these two gifts. هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ because it's far better and far more valuable than anything else they gather and amass. That these two blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us are more valuable than anything else in this world. So it behooves us to spend as much time with the book of Allah. To spend time increasing our relationship with the Qur'an. So I'm going to leave everyone with two really quick uh, pieces of advice of how we can nurture and develop a stronger relationship with the Qur'an. How can we increase our love for the Qur'an? First and foremost is by increasing our love for Allah. The more we learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we learn about our Lord and Creator, the more appreciation we'll have for His speech. The more appreciation we'll have for revelation. And one of the best ways of learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the Qur'an itself. In those passages, in those verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself to us through his beautiful divine names and attributes. And number two is daily regular recitation. That daily regular recitation has to become part of our lives. That no day should pass us by where we don't spend some time with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not just reading it passively, but being actively engaged with it trying our best to understand its message so that it does become a guide for us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of us with love for the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with love for the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who recite it regularly and consistently, who understand its message and try our best to build our lives upon its guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Qur'an a proof for us, not against us. May the Qur'an be an intercessor for us on the Day of Judgment. 
Allahumma ja'alna min ahli al-Qur'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us among the people of the Qur'an. الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَخَاصَتُهُ Those who are the unique and special servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our mistakes, our shortcomings, and enter all of us into paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all the Muslims that are struggling throughout the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their pain and suffering. May He give them patience and steadfastness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure anyone who is ill, give them a complete and quick recovery. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive anyone who's passed away, give them the highest ranks in paradise and grant patience to their families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us and accept all of our good deeds. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أصل أحوال المسلمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون